Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. I'm just gonna random here. Ooh, that is a pretty good random, actually. I'm excited about the way that this could play out. Last run, uh, if I remember correctly, it has been uh, maybe a day or two, and also as a, you know, heavy narcotics user, I have the short-term memory of that one dude from, uh, what was that movie, 69 First Dates with Adam Sandler, where, you know, he introduces himself, and he's like, hey, I'm a Dinglehorn, and then he, you know, doesn't have any memory of it. I'm pretty sure, though, uh, that uh, we got all the way to the chest, but then lost in some kind of unfortunate circumstances. Some circumstances where um, you would have expected me to probably be a likely candidate to win that game, but unfortunately, you know, things don't always shake out the way that you want them to. I am playing as Kane here. I'm excited about that because Kane is, uh, of course, a great character to play as, especially when you get pills early on that give you the ability to teleport into the one of the item rooms and get a damage upgrade plus a health upgrade. Which actually is pretty significant because, uh, well, A, we only have one key and we're on an XL floor. So it, it's nice to be able to, uh, you know, save a key by not having to open up one of these item rooms. So this ensures that we can go to both item rooms. And, you know, we may have gone to the other item room if we discovered it earlier. And we would have missed out on what is actually a pretty solid upgrade, all things considered. Uh, we probably would not have, though, given the layout of the level. Anyway, plus there's another key back there, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But hypothetically, that could have made an enormous difference. The other enormous difference is just that, you know, HP upgrade is a really awesome thing to get as Kane. And the damage upgrade is uh, perhaps the icing on the cake. More like the icing on the cake. Kink! <laughs> Kink, doesn't that say- Ooh, we also got Tammy's head from his golden chest, which could be interesting, but not yet. Uh, and of course, Robo Baby, which needs no introduction. Not because it's particularly amazing, but because, you know, what you see is what you get. Anyway, doesn't Kink- I would say, puts the icing on the cake. Uh, doesn't Kink kind of sound like, you know, one of those schoolyard names you'd come up with for, like, the space between your crotch and your anus hole? That's, I mean, maybe I'm being a little bit forthcoming there, but uh, that's what it sounds like to me. You'd be like, yeah, dude, it's totally called, like, the Grundle or the the Kink. I don't know. The Kink is um, an, also a term which refers to uh, what happens when you uh, jump on somebody's stomach when they're really hungover and they really have to poop, and then they just kind of, they fart internally. And where am I even going with this conversation right off the bat here? Sometimes it takes a little while for me to put myself in the fugue state necessary uh, to generate Isaac commentary. So, you know, this is just, oh my god, those are two more telepills, unfortunately. Fortunately? Unfortunately? I don't know. Obviously, we're going to pop both of those on this floor to see if we can snag uh, the I Am Air room, but we should, in all likelihood, make our way to the boss room first. We may also be able to find the secret room as a result of that. We'll see, in any case. We're also getting an F-ton of keys, which is absolutely fantastic, because uh, we're going to be able to use these for a variety of purposes, which you probably don't need me to explain. In any case, so far, so good. We'll have uh, a boss room, and then another boss room immediately after it, and then the possibility of a deal with the devil. So it's very much possible... Oh, these... Spirit Hearts, I'm glad to have them, but by the same token, I'm also kind of like, I wish that I was thinking a little bit straighter in my Isaac play right now, because I probably shouldn't pick these up. I just keep throwing them away by, you know, for example, going to the Curse Room like I just did. But anyway, um, so far so good. Uh, we'll see if we get a chance at that deal with the Devil, and we'll also get uh, an opportunity that is... It's really shitty that I missed on Tammy's Head there, because that probably is like one of my highest damage dealing uh, opportunities right now. Tammy's Head, certainly not the greatest item uh, in the game, no question about that, but... Uh, it does scale quite nicely with a number of tier effects, like if we end up getting like uh, like a lump of coal or something, then it picks up that. If we end up getting homing tiers, it picks up that. Uh, and I believe it may also just scale with our raw damage as well, so um, it, it can potentially be something that can make a difference on a room, uh, or even on a floor, or even on the game in general, but uh, for now we're not quite there yet. So second boss is going to be Monstro. You can see we did about 10% of his health with one shot from Tammy's head there. That's actually pretty significant. Um, not gonna change the world, at least not yet, but, uh, on some rooms it can kind of work kind of like a radial brimstone, where you know you walk into a room with brimstone or blue candle, and then, uh, just by firing it once, you're able to take out maybe half the enemies in the room and make your life a little bit easier. And this, with Tammy's head, you kind of wander out into the center of the room and you take out half the enemies before they can get to you. Um, but it's gonna require, uh, the perfect storm of items, in all likelihood. Anyway! That's that. We got the HP upgrade, and we've also discovered our uh, deal with the devil room. I think it's a pretty bad idea to take uh, Brimstone here, because I kind of am going to enjoy just having a traditional run. So why don't we be a little funkier, and we'll take the mark. We already got two HP upgrades on this floor, so this will increase our damage, and if I'm correct, it may also increase the um, damage that Tammy's head does. Well, let's pop Telepills number one, see if we get to I Am Air room. Obviously, that didn't work out very well for us. Now I'm a little uh, hesitant to walk into the curse room again. I'm just thinking about the possible rewards. It's probably not... We're going to go to the other rooms first, by the way. It's probably not mathematically 
logical for us to walk into that curse room. We'll lose half of the spirit heart, uh, and that's it, because we'll just telepills out of it, obviously, saving us the, the damage from uh, walking back. I do want to use Tammy's head. I'm just kind of waiting for this uh, arena to open up a bit so I can, yeah. I don't know if that worked at all, but it seemed like it took a little extra damage at the end there. And it did seem like Tammy's head uh, did more damage as well, or at least the tears changed color. Uh, but wh what are our outs, basically? What are the good things that we want from... Uh from using this telepills, I am error room, which would be amazing, but what are the chances of that? Probably like 1 in 25, 1 in 26. We got another pill too, which we'll take right away. Awesome, range upgrade. Uh, not particularly useful right now, but maybe later in the future. Uh, but it's either that or the secret room, so is it probably worth half of a spirit heart to do what I'm about to do? No, but uh, I am going to do it anyway because I think it could be interesting. And if it works out, the uh, potential payout, especially on that I am error room, is potentially quite high. Uh, it actually teleported us to the shop. Which, in some other circumstances, could have been okay, because it did save us a key. Uh, but in this circumstance, didn't really do too much for us. But now that we know where the shop is, and I, I can get in there for free, uh, I will sacrifice a few bombs here. That was a pretty piss-poor decision. Uh, I will sacrifice a few bombs here, trying to find the secret room. And if I do find the secret room, then maybe I'll have enough money to buy the map, and I'll never have to worry about trying to find a secret room again in the future. Well, we only got three cents. Uh, so we basically gave up those bombs at a penny apiece, which is not particularly strong, but we milked this floor. Uh, we have no bombs remaining, which means there's not really much that we can do here except twiddle our own thumbs, maybe edge a little bit. Uh, you know, masturbate to the deleted scenes on the Austin Powers Spy Who Shagged Me DVD. All of these stories come from, uh, dark truths of my adolescent life, which is really where I've, I've existed in a state of arrested development for quite some time. In any case, down to the next floor. Let's try to push that deep down as I've been doing for years. Uh, I will destroy everyone there with Tammy's head, which is very easy. One thing I will say about this run, and, uh, you know, when I phrase it like that, it kind of makes it sound like it's been going pretty poorly so far, but this has actually been a, a very solid run. Uh, considering we're only two floors deep, I will absolutely open up this golden chest, which gives me a good segue to say, uh, one of the best things about this run so far is the frequency with which consumables has dropped. Uh, a really unlikely occurrence to end up getting, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of six to eight keys. Wait, couldn't I just say six to nine? The, the joke potential was right there. Um, six to eight keys, like, on the very, very, uh, first floor or two, um, is allowing you to open, you know, item rooms after item rooms, and also the golden chests that, uh, come with these rooms sometimes in the hopes of getting something a little bit better, but, um, you know, it, it, the golden chests haven't paid out particularly well, except Tammy's head, which could be an interesting, uh, thing for us in the future, but still, it's very nice to have the freedom to open everything that we want to open by way of these keys. So, things are gonna be interesting, we're about to fight our second boss, I guess, kind of... Smartly, I would love it if this this was Pestilence. Of course, by the time I even finished my sentence, we had known that that was not the case. That's okay, though. Um, pestilence would have given us the second level Q of meat, which would have given us uh, not only the defense from the familiar, which we already have, of course, by way of the one that we got from Famine, but... Ooh, okay, I got very lucky to not get hit there, in all honesty. Uh, but also, uh, the ability to do some extra damage by way of having a familiar. It's always nice to stack up damage like that, and of course, it would also lay the groundwork for us getting a third or fourth level cube of meat at some point in the future, which could allow us to do uh, massive damage. But anyway, for now, let's not get too distracted. We are fighting Peep here, and after he dies, which will be basically right now, we will get Pageant Boy, which could be good, but in all likelihood uh, is going to retain its place as kind of a lower tier boss room item. The real piss off is that not only did we not get an HP upgrade, which would be pretty useful right now, uh, we didn't even get to 15 cents, unfortunately, which means that uh, I'm still going to have to hopefully scrounge up for a cent if I want to buy that ladder, which I really don't. Uh, or I'll have to, you know, look for the secret room or something like that. And again, um, you know, this is far from the death knell for this run, but it is kind of uh, a floor where maybe the payout was not particularly what I expected. However, uh, we still have an item room remaining, that should go without saying, but we also still have this pill that I just picked up, which could end up being some kind of uh, upgrade. Let's see. Friends till the end. Not really. It's nice to know that it's in the rotation, but it's not particularly strong. Demon Baby, on the other hand, is probably one of the strongest familiars. Robo Baby's been working out just fine for us, but uh, Demon Baby is even better. I the, the downside, the caveat with Demon Baby is that you do have to get very close to the enemies in order to make it work, or in order for it to actually have aggression, but uh, when it actually does work, it works very, very well. So we have to make a decision about what we're going to do here. I With three bombs, I think it would be stupid of me to not look for the secret room. Even if I wasn't looking for money, it would also give me a good opportunity to pick up potentially an item, like a skeleton key or pyro or a one-up or an onk, raw liver, etc., etc. Of course, the fetus items, if I was going for the easiest run of all time. But, uh, this time it's only going to give us three cents, and that's not the end of the world. I think I'm not going to buy the ladder, and instead I'm just going to buy another key, 
just to ensure I can continue kind of taking this aggressive approach. Because especially, you know, this is me talking out of my ass, so feel free to tell me if this is wrong. Uh, but as Kane, I feel like it's wise to be as aggressive as possible with those golden chests if you have the opportunity to do so. Because golden chests are probably worth a little bit more when all pills are guaranteed to not be bad. That's just my hunch. I, I have not crunched the numbers, but it seems to make sense to me. Uh, also, by not spending money, I have a lot of uh, possibilities to do with my money on this floor right here. Uh, I have the opportunity to play that judgment. I also have the opportunity to go to the shop, which is right next to me. Unfortunately, the razor blade kind of useless in this situation. And unfortunately, I can't actually get to uh, judgment without getting another bomb. I wish these flies would actually, there we go, go attack Greed because they could kill him so easily. Uh, I will need another bomb before I can get to judgment. And I'm going to need to, or the ability to fly, which would also be welcome, believe you me. Uh, but, uh, for now, I'm just gonna have to abandon him. Actually, now the ability to fly looks pretty awesome over there. That's a telepills and I think a range upgrade and maybe something else that I don't know. We'll definitely go inside of our curse room, even though it'll lose us our spirit heart. I don't feel particularly scared right now, if, if that makes sense. Uh, that sucks, but we have the speed necessary to get away. Uh, even though I'm, uh, I'm only at two hearts and we're four floors into the game, I, I don't feel particularly frightened about the, the state of the run so far. It is not necessarily that we're in a great position because we're not, but it, it certainly could be worse. This bomb should blow up that rock without blowing up Judgment, and we are in like flints here. So, 21 cents. Ideally, he would pay out, you know, on the next cent, but uh, I would love for him to... Well, I mean, it's nice to get that Chariot card because now we can get a lot of money out of a Blood Bank if we come across one, or we can just get out of a particularly difficult room, or, uh, you know, fight a boss with a little bit more ease. But anyway, we th the rambling there was unnecessary. We got the Chariot card. Uh, and we also picked up an HP upgrade, which is very essential at this point. Now, if we can just get a little bit more health, we can take a trip inside of the uh, mob trap room there, where hopefully things will go well for us. Did we seriously still have that fly from, like, ages ago? Uh, that is A-OK -okay with me, because he did help me kill an enemy with relative ease. Now, ooh, I should have probably taken damage there, but I didn't, so uh, somebody up there likes me is all I can really say about that. This guy will be dead in a second, and, you know, catacombs ain't nothing to fuck with, but uh, we're going to be done with this floor. Not too, too long, and uh, that's good news. If we end up picking up another heart, I would also be uh, pretty pleased about that. Now, kind of unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but it's not really unfortunate. Uh, we, we have a library. This is potentially good, potentially bad. Bad because it could be a waste of a key, and we don't have a D6, so we can never like just fuck with the, the rerolls and eventually get a good item pool out of it. But uh, there could also be an item that is uh, trouncing Tammy's head. As good as Tammy's head is, I think it's much smarter for us. We should probably take Monster Man well so it never comes back, but um, we should probably roll with Book of Belial instead. This is a much more kind of traditional... Isaac run. There's no funky stuff going on, largely because I don't have the D6. Uh, and as a result, I'm having to play a little bit more traditionally, and more traditionally, ooh, that Eternal Heart will be very important if I can keep it alive. Uh, more traditionally absolutely means, it's a range up, sadly. Uh, more traditionally absolutely means valuing the Book of Belial over something like Tammy's Head, which is, uh, you know, Tammy's Head has done well for us, and if we end up picking up some amazing tier effects, I may regret taking Book of Belial. But it's a, only a very thin sliver, I think, where, um, well, that Hermit card could be valuable, too, but uh, it's only a very thin sliver, I think, where Tammy's head would actually be better than Book of Belial. Uh, especially if we end up picking up uh, Nun's Habit less so, but still to a certain extent. But 9-volt battery and, uh, and Nun's Habit would uh, really make Book of Belial substantially better. Already, uh, this boss fight was pretty easy, as you can see, but we could always use a little bit more offensive punch whenever possible. Uh, Spirit of the Night is a no-brainer pickup, even though it takes us super low. We have that Eternal Heart that we can bank on, plus we have some pills here. So if these are health ups, which they are not, uh, if these are health ups, which they are not, but Balls of Steel still pretty good, uh, then we're, we're sitting pretty here. So we have bad gas, but I'd rather... We have the Hermit card and the Chariot card. Um... I'm just trying to think about how I would do this. It might be for the... Maybe not for the best. That's probably a weird way to explain it. But um, it might be good to take the Hermit card for now. Because now I can walk into the... Oh, there's the pills back there too that I should definitely get. Um, I can walk into this room and then uh, see if there's an item. And if there is, I can just teleport out. So we'll just pop this open. Uh, you know, I got six cents out of it. The, the thing with the Hermit card is that it would save us a floor, or sorry, save us a key, so I don't necessarily want to use it to teleport unless it's absolutely necessary. And, you know, saving us a key when we only have one key in our current situation may end up making a fairly enormous difference down the road. Maybe it opens us up to one item that would otherwise be inaccessible. In any case, we're, we're clearly playing with fire right now, but uh, as Kane, the, the Balls of Steel pills that we kind of luckily got uh, worked out very well for us. I did lose half of a Spirit Heart on this room. Half a Spirit Heart for six cents in a key is an A-OK -okay trade, in my opinion. 
Why would I ever go back for the chariot card instead? Well, it would be nice to be able to use that on a... Um, Fuck greed, yeah, okay. Uh, it would be very nice to be able to use that on Blood Bank, but the Hermit card is probably more valuable. We have a Telepills, which will pop at the end as well, uh, and that just took us, you know, a couple rooms away. Now we decide. Chariot card, which could give us a lot of money and some opportunities to play on the uh, Blood Bank to the point where we could get the Blood Bag, or we go with the, um, the Hermit card, which saves us a key guaranteed. I don't know, it's an interesting situation. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, you know what, maybe the Chariot card actually would be for the best, even though the Hermit card is a guaranteed save uh, of a key. Yeah, it could give us like four plays on the Blood Bank, which would actually be pretty nice. Plus, it could just save a room for us. It's a little bit more versatile. Anyway, this might be a bad decision, but it's very unlikely to be a decision that has a major impact on the run. So far, so good, anyway. Necropolis, so, you know, since we are on Necropolis, I do feel that the, the Chariot card slightly more valuable on this floor because it's likely that we may end up using it to actually get ourselves out of a tight jam. But for now, so far, so good. Uh, I am going to pop the Book of Belial as often as I humanly can. Thank God I got those range upgrades. It allows me to stay just far enough away from the enemies to not actually put myself in danger. Now, I keep forgetting we don't have Lump of Coal. We just have some substantial range upgrades. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't use that too much to my advantage, at least offensively. Defensively, of course, it allows me to stay uh, far away from the hustle and bustle and make it more unlikely for me to be hit. But anyway, uh, we will take out these enemies as soon as we can and pop open our item room where we get Ghost Baby. So it's going to be one of those runs. You know, much like daily challenges uh, in Spelunky, I oftentimes feel like uh, Isaac runs have some kind of pre-programmed theme, but I believe it's just the natural human tendency to, to draw patterns from seemingly random uh, scatters of information, if that makes sense. Uh, so I don't necessarily think Isaac runs are programmed to have any sort of theme. I think it's just when we see things that are similar, we draw conclusions that maybe are not necessarily valid. In any case, I didn't mean to get so insightful. Farts, farts, alright, 69. Okay, we're back to uh, usual self here. It's like priming, you know, you gotta program yourself just a little bit. That golden chest extraordinarily tempting, but I am holding out my key for now uh, in the hopes that we actually come across that glorious shop which has the, the, the items I need. It's due! I really do think it's it's coming here. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get a 9 volt or a battery or a nun's habit or even a blue candle or something like that. I would give up uh, I would give up Book of Belial for the blue candle. It's just a maybe not an objective upgrade, but in our situation here it would be an enormous upgrade. Plus, like Tammy's head, we could use it every single room, which would be very valuable as well. No more keys, sadly. Uh, the bomb, useful, but, you know, not in a traditional sense, maybe, because we, we certainly do not need to look for the secret room. We really need more bombs, in all or sorry, more keys, in all honesty. At this point, we are coming across uh, a number of golden chests. And I hate that this has now opened up uh, an area for those blue spikes to be a little bit more dangerous. But anyway, okay, so we're against Mask of Infamy here, which is, uh, you know, doubtlessly one of the hardest enemies in the game, no question about it. But we do have an advantage, and that advantage is that uh, by way of Robo Baby, I should be able to hit him uh, reasonably easily. Unfortunately, I don't have Book of Belial already, but Robo Baby I don't believe is affected by it anyway, so... Uh, Robo Baby should be able to fire directly into his face and still damage him. Now, this is gonna take forever. It's gonna take an awful long time. Uh, but I still think it's smart for me to save the Chariot card and use the Chariot card later. I think I could fairly easily get through the rest of this fight without getting damaged. And the, the only good thing, in fact, uh, about the Mask of Infamy fight, we don't have a, a piercing shot of your own, is that, uh, you know, the Mask himself has relatively low HP. So even though we may be here for quite some time, it could certainly be worse, and uh, it's it's important to always remember that, you know, keep it in perspective. Also, it seems like uh, Ghost Baby, sorry, Demon Baby, is uh, occasionally getting a, a random hit in here or there, because it is very slow following me around, and that actually gives it an opening to attack it on its uh, exposed flank now and then. But for now, we'll just continue kind of walking around in a circle here. Uh, it's, it's more difficult than I expected to keep Robo Baby uh, in the area of effect here, but you can see, you know, he's blinking now and then. Uh, he being Mask of Infamy, so we are getting the uh, occasional shot in. And before too, too long, we have completed the fight. Now, no deal with the devil. I thought I really earned it there, but no such luck. And we still have our Chariot card, which is a, a nice position to be in. Plus, we have enough HP to trade for another deal with the devil if we came across the mythical, aka, you know, Mom's Knife, basically, God tier, uh, uh, deal with the devil items. But for now, uh, we'll continue to move along. After that agonizing fight, it seems a little bit of a waste to use uh, Book of Belial to take out 
a few enemies who uh, I've already uh, handled many a time here, but oh well, so be it. More keys, please. Okay, well, we get more money in a bomb. Uh, bomb potentially useful, but no, okay, that was a pretty good drop there. I lost the spirit heart, and we'll lose half of one more checking this out, but we could possibly get a good payout on it as well. Sadly, we didn't, but, um, you know, at least we know now. And I'm not too concerned about losing these spirit hearts. Uh, for now, they would leave me pe pretty vulnerable if I lost them, but, um, it is, we are in a position where we have, you know, more HP than Kane normally has. We are getting to a part of the game, which is pretty difficult. Uh, but uh, in any case, we'll not die immediately if we lose these spirit hearts. It's not like when we picked up uh, Spirit of the Night and just immediately only had one heart remaining. So, do we buy the Steam Sale? Yeah, I think that's pretty obvious, because uh, we're going to buy some other things and we still have another floor remaining. I didn't realize that was Friends Till the End, which sucks pretty hard, and... Uh, I'm not going to buy the Spirit Heart. I know it seems like it should be like that should be something that I should definitely do, but I don't think it provides much value. I think I'm just going to lose it anyway, and I would rather be uh, existing entirely on Red Hearts before I start making a push for Spirit Hearts, if that makes sense. It, it may not. In, in fact, like it may not just not be that I'm communicating poorly. It may actually make no sense at all. So we picked up two keys here, and uh, you know what a coincidence. We have some golden chests that I can pop open, and we popped open one that gave us two keys back. So... Uh, I don't necessarily want to uh, open the mob trap room one high priority, but I will open these two and we'll probably save one key for the next floor uh, and hopefully we'll still be able to uh, visit the item room and the shop. So I don't, I don't necessarily think those keys paid out too well for us, but we still have one remaining to go down to the next floor. Who knows, maybe the one in the mob, mob trap room did have uh, some serious value associated with, with it. Not the mob trap room, obviously that one is borderline useless, but anyway. Uh, Green Larry Jr. is dead, and he's dropping uh, yet another smattering of resources that I can't really do too much with. We do have a Tinted Rock in here, though, and the main value of Tinted Rocks for me right now is not, you know, survival in a blue baby, I need spirit hearts right now sense. Um, it is keys. Keys and small rock. My, uh, my speed is good enough that I don't necessarily need to be concerned about losing small rock. So that was basically one bomb for one key trade. Fine by me. We shouldn't open golden chests yet. Um, that may actually prove to be the right decision, but uh, we shouldn't open them yet because we need to go to the shop. I imagine that our shop will, in all likelihood, contain uh, super greed, but uh, if it doesn't, then good for us, basically. So, uh, what do we need right now? Health's okay, but it would be nice to get a guppy's paw at least briefly to turn our uh, health entirely into spirit hearts, if that would help us out a lot, uh, which I believe it would. Obviously, the more uh, HP upgrades we get, the better guppy's paw becomes if we're just going to use it as like a transient upgrade one time. Uh, which, as I've realized from playing Grand Theft Auto V, because I'm so hip, is actually slang for police. Who knew? The one time are on their way, for example. Uh, this is our mom fight, so I absolutely should not come in here right off the bat. We got our third key, so now I can open up that golden chest. And hopefully we'll get something there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, a little bit more HP would be awesome, or a way to make our existing HP a little bit more useful. <sighs> so I'm deciding what to do with this High Priestess and this Chariot card. Um, the Chariot card we should carry with us because there could be an arcade on this floor. It is an even number. And we have a certain amount of money, which uh, makes it a little bit more of a probability. There's our shop, so everything's going to start moving pretty quickly here. More damage or uh, a higher rate of fire would also be very, very nice. Apart from that, uh, I'm feeling pretty okay. Yeah, so I, I had a feeling we'd end up... Uh, fighting Greed or one of his cousins in here. Uh, in this case, it was vanilla version of Greed. I totally froze up there. I got very lucky to not take damage. At least we picked up a bomb for our troubles, but uh, still not that good of a payout considering what we need right now. We're, we're basically we're stronger than we would need to be to feel good about the way things are going right now. Uh, but we're on the depths, and the depths are a relatively easy floor uh, compared to the point of the game that we're at. You know, the Necropolis is a whole different story, but uh, the depths, not a real worry uh, as long as you, you've done your due diligence in the earlier floors. You probably have a very good chance to be acceptably powerful for this point. More damage is probably the most important thing. Uh, but the HP, it, of course, is the, the lifeblood of the game as well, so that would be helpful. I don't know what's going on with the random number genera generator in Isaac today. It seems like we are just uh, consistently going up against Chubb over and over and over. This is like the third room where we fought Chubb on this floor, and we've only been to like ten rooms. One of them was the shop, so uh, at some point, something's got to give here. But could be worse. It's a very easy room to fight, especially if you manage to make those uh, explosive barrels actually work in your favor. Uh, now I immediately want to go back to, to fighting Chubb. I totally forgot that I can fly. That actually makes life a lot easier. I hope I didn't fuck up and, uh, you know, skip some 
consumables on a room because I could fly, because that would be silly of me. Now, the, here's where the value in there being a, uh, a blood bank really comes to a head, because if we actually manage to find a blood bank, that will allow me to go to this boss trap room, which could potentially contain, well, in all likelihood, an HP upgrade, but maybe a tears upgrade, maybe a damage upgrade, maybe something even better than that, but uh, I've got to hope that that exists first, which seems unlikely. And I'm not really using Book of Belial because I don't know how many rooms are remaining. I can feel reasonably confident that there are enough rooms that I could get the Book of Belial uh, charged up for the mom boss fight, but I can't be 100% confident. And if the rooms that I'm coming across are relatively easy, you know, the difference between using Book of Belial and not using Book of Belial is not very much, so I don't need to concern myself too much. So we get Celtic Cross, that's going to be our final canonical item room item. Doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for me, but uh, hey, we did come across an arcade, so time to see if this chariot card uh, actually proves useful. This is probably not the first time I've ever used a chariot card just for invincibility on the blood bank, uh, but it is the first time in a while uh, that I think I've done it. And we get the curved horn just to give it up in a, a minute, but now there is a right order to this, and the way that we do it, uh, we'll probably get some invincibility by way of Celtic Cross, which actually sucks, because I don't want this to pay out yet. I want to be able to get uh, to one heart, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we got the HP upgrade, obviously, but I want to be able to get, uh, low. That sucks. But now we don't even need the chariot card. God damn it! Oh, thank god I didn't pick up that red heart. Uh, probably should pick up the IV bag, I guess. Just to, uh, do this, and then put it back down. You know what would balance the IV bag, in my opinion? The IV bag is pretty terrible, but, uh, if it had, like, a 1 in 20 chance of paying out with the, uh, blood bag, would that be too easily exploitable? Because you could just, uh, if you had the Polaroid, then you can get like four plays for half of a red heart. Um, and each one would guarantee you more red hearts uh, coming back from it. Wow, okay. Um, should go without saying, but the ability to get the Polaroid on our boss trap room here is, or sorry, not the Polaroid, the uh, pentagram on our boss trap room here is extraordinary. That is exceptionally useful for us. Uh, and of course, it works very, very well in conjunction with uh, Book of Belial. Anyway, we fought like our fifth chub here. One more boss remaining, it's just gonna be Peep. No big deal. Truth be told, it's probably better to use Book of Belial in this situation than it is to use it on the mom room. Uh, mom fight, I guess I should say, but, uh, you know, I, that's my, uh, I, I made my choices and I'm gonna live with them. I don't think it's going to make a big difference in the whole scheme of things. Anyway, uh, anyway, just very good luck here. But, uh, you know, you can run through the theory crafting for that balance idea that I just suggested. I'm not going to look for the secret room. Uh, I should pick up that heart, though. I'm not going to look for the secret room, but I feel uh, that from a floor standpoint, we're doing pretty well right now. Damage is a little bit better. Pentagram, I think, is plus two damage. It's a rare item. It's not the rarest. Max's head shows up a lot more rarely if we're just talking about damage upgrades. But, um... Still, it doesn't show up all that often, so uh, it's nice to have it. Now we have the High Priestess card. What what wins, High Priestess or Chariot? Uh, the High Priestess card occasionally hurts us, but now that we're very unlikely to come across uh, another blood... Well, not very unlikely, but now that we're unlikely to come across another blood bank, or less likely to come across another blood bank, uh, I think it's right to go uh, with the High Priestess card instead. In any case, uh, I don't know why I got hurt like immediately upon walking into this room. Something to do with like the direction of the doors, plus the fact that I flew in via Spirit of the Night. I don't know. Um, one thing's for sure, we're doing a, a pretty good job of crushing Mom here, like a Gary Vaynerchuk autobiography. Uh, if we just uh, stay away just a little bit here, I didn't even see the spider on the ground when I got hit there, actually. Um, it should be relatively easy for me to get the kill. We also got the crate, which has some value. Positive and negative. Negative because it's taking away an item from something that's possibly better. Um, death card is certainly a lot worse. And we want to stick with the Polaroid. A lot worse than the High Priestess, I should say. I and mean, do we really want to use Telepills? Yes, because we have the Polaroid already. Uh, so by doing this, I could have gotten an I Am Air room. And even just by teleporting away, it does give me the opportunity to possibly snag a deal with the Devil uh, when I go back. That was a... I can't believe I didn't walk properly. Uh, there. It gives me the opportunity to get a deal with the Devil when I walk into uh, this room again. Pretty unlikely, but a theoretical possibility nonetheless. And no such luck. That's fine, though. So we want to go with the High Priestess card. Unfortunately, I have to leave behind uh, everything else. There's a couple of half-decent items here. And I am going to rehydrate a little bit as we wait for this uh, uh, kind of inner splash to go away. So, apologies if you just heard the gross sound of me lapping up water like some kind of dog. I'm a thirsty boy, what can I say? Whenever grown men refer to themselves as boys, like 90% of the time, there's some kind of vague sexual overtone there, right? That was not what it was intended. This was the 10%. Uh, okay, another key. We can use that for something, I suppose. 
uh, a little bit later if you manage to live that long. What are the major concerns right now? On a raw level, we don't have a staggering amount of health or damage. And then, uh, oh my god, we're really going to fight Chubb again? Uh, then when it comes to, like, interstitial stuff, we don't have a compass. We don't have a map. We don't have anything that makes our spacebar item, be item better. Uh, but our spacebar item is pretty good just by itself. Um, but it, obviously, it could certainly be better. There's a couple of items that are better than it. And uh, obviously, anything that augments it would, of course, improve it. Uh, so we're, we're kind of like, you know, Jack of all trades, master of none right now, or, you know, it's like you're playing an RPG, and you put, you didn't want to commit to anything, you didn't want to make yourself, you know, high in strength and low in dexterity or something like that. Instead, we've made ourselves, you know, just kind of adequate in everything, and, you know, Isaac is a game where it's a theoretical possibility that we could still live, uh, employing this strategy, and I use strategy loosely because a lot of this is based on the RNG of the items we were given, uh, but I would really like for one of these up- I should have just moved there. Um, I would really like for one of these upcoming rooms, boss rooms I guess specifically, uh, to provide me with a staggering amount of improved value. Otherwise, we may find ourselves dying. Probably on the cathedral would be where I would put our, uh, our date of obsolescence at this point. Uh, there's, there's ways out of it, and there's certainly ways to improve uh, our chances of winning, but they've got to happen pretty fast. I think this is a run where it's theoretically possible for me to win, but uh, you're talking in the maybe 15 to 20 percent range right now, which is obviously not where I would necessarily li necessarily like it to be. So we're fighting uh, Chubb again because, you know, apparently that's just the theme of this run. Chubb and the followers, uh, which sounds like a great name for, like, a chubby rapper in the early 90s that probably sucked a lot. Anyway, uh, we get two spirit hearts. It's going to cost us one spirit heart to come into that room, but... Obviously, mathematically, that's a fair trade anyway. And not having the compass is a real problem. Sometimes it can be a blessing in disguise because you, you end up going to more rooms as a result of not knowing where the exit is, and then those rooms contain uh, items of value. Most of the time, that's a storybook romance that, that doesn't work out like that. Most of the time, you end up getting yourself hurt more often. Uh, but we do find the secret room here, which may allow us to get something amazing, or it may allow us to pick up nine cents that are probably functionally worthless, as a result of uh, us not having any more shops, and even if we did have shops, uh, we have the steam sale, so nine cents is, well, you know, half as valuable, I guess, from a scarcity standpoint, but uh, could, could still work out if we end up coming across like four or five judgments, which again, okay, well, I <laughs> don't know what to say about that then, do I? Uh, what I will say is that, um, you might be saying, Northern Lion, you fool, why not at least do something with the High Priestess card? You're not wrong. Uh, what I wanna, what I'm doing with this Judgment card is I'm taking it to the boss room to see if, uh, I will be able to use it on a Deal with the Devil room. Because if I use it on a Deal with the Devil room, then Judgment exclusively pays out with Deal with the Devil items. Not all Deal with the Devil items are created equal. Some of them would actually be worse than just picking up, like, a raw HP upgrade, which is what Judgment likely is going to pay out with, uh, if he was just kind of sitting out here. That being said, um, this could backfire in another way as well. If we get a demon judgment, well, of course we can play him a few times. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, if we end up running out of health and want to replenish, if we leave, we may not be able to go back into the deal with the devil. So, anyway, it, it, in all likelihood, it's going to be a regular judgment, though, and we'll be fine. But uh, we'll, we'll see if that ends up working out or happening to us. In any case, we've got to find the boss room first, which is proving to be uh, a tall order in and of itself. Thankfully, we were able to kill that nub over there, which was a real frustrating uh, clusterfuck there in not too long we're gonna find ourselves in a very dangerous position the womb is uh, the easier of the two levels is it not utero is the more difficult one if I remember correctly so uh, we got our boss room so we'll, we'll go through this little song and dance here I am gambling on um, the deal with the devil room appearing a and B this not being a demon judgment but uh, we'll see if that ends up working out for us Northern Lion, why are you not using your Book of Belial? Well, this is um, an interesting, very specific case why I'm not using Book of Belial. I'm not using Book of Belial because the boss that we are fighting, Skolex, is absurdly easy. If I want to explore any remaining rooms on this floor, every room that we come across that has enemies in it is going to be easier than this fight, or sorry, more difficult than this fight against Skolex, and thus more, uh, I don't know, suitable to use the Book of Belial on. Additionally, it's possible that our deal with the devil will contain Krampus. Krampus is more difficult than Skolex, uh, and as a result, I am tempted to, you know, save, uh, Book of Belial for that possibility, and likely also because, um, you know, not to rag on Skolex, 
but it just doesn't matter. We're, we're pretty unlikely to uh, take damage against him whether we use the Deal with the Devil or not, or Book of Belial or not. Okay, so our Judgment card goes down. It is a Demon Judgment. This is an interesting one. Oh, luckily we got Invincibility here, so it would be very nice to be able to have the Chariot card right now. Sadly, I do not, um, unless that's it right there. Did we get another period of Invincibility there? I'm going to be able to play this guy like 30 times. Okay, he paid out with Guppy's Paw. Um, we got the Fool card, which sucks, but by getting Guppy's Paw, I'm going to I'm gonna cash out. And we're going to have permanent Polaroid Invincibility, and we'll be at how many Spirit Hearts? 15, I think? None of these items really warrant uh, doing anything. What do we have? We still have the High Priestess card back there. Yeah, we'll go back for the High Priestess card. It is one of those cards that could end up making a pretty major difference. Maybe not in all likelihood, but it could happen, so I'll go back for it. Um, Gobby's Paw is a big pickup there, and actually does put us in a more likely position where we could win. I would have preferred, you know, there were other more game-changing items, which are pretty obvious. Mom's Knife Chief amongst them. Uh, even something like the Pact might have been a little bit better, but we didn't have the option to get that. Uh, basically, we got a free Guppy's Paw, which is a, a, a pretty nice deal. We also had the ability to get nine lives. I don't know how that would have worked out for us. Lord of the Pit is basically just a speed upgrade, since we already have the ability to fly as a result of Spirit of the Night. But in any case, Utero 2. So this is the uh, the harder version of the floor, as far as I recall. We're a little bit stronger now than we used to be, but uh, not by too, too much. And not even stronger, I guess. Just hardier, if that makes sense. Uh, we're going to have our hands full. Not on this floor, again, in all likelihood. But uh, I do expect that uh, once we get up to the cathedral, almost said down to the cathedral, uh, then it's going to be pretty wild. You know what it gets me? You, sorry, it channeled, you know, James Rawl for a second there. You know what's bullshit? No, I'm not going to do it. Um... When I say, hey, we're coming, like, up to America this weekend, you want to hang out, and then people are like, up to America, um, we're gonna take Shoot the Whoop, I guess, just to put it back down, up to sundown, see where the bad guys are to be found and make them lay down, but they're like, up to America, like, you silly Canuck, don't you know that Canada's above America, and then we're like, yes, literally, uh, I suppose, on a map, if you looked at it that way, that is the, the way that the countries are oriented, but that's not like a geographical truth, like, you know, you could turn that map upside down and it would still be equally valid, right? Like you could put Antarctica at the top and you could put the south at the top. It's just we have this, uh, not necessarily bias, because that implies that, you know, there's something wrong with it. I don't necessarily think that's true. But we have this this bias to some extent. Ooh, uh, unfortunately, I can't really pick that up. Let's go fight Mom's Heart while I continue rambling here. Um, we have this bias towards putting north at the top and then that colors our worldview to a certain extent to think that somehow Canada is, uh, like, physically located above the United States or, you know, like, Belgium is physically located above Germany or something like that. That's just nonsense is what I'm getting at here. So, you know, it's just a, a turn of phrase. I, you could probably, if you've watched all these videos, you can draw a, a thread between the things that annoy me, and it's almost always people trying to seem smart for reasons that are extraordinarily petty. Um, you know, that and racism, uh, of course, I would consider major problems. Um, obviously, half-joking there. Not half-joking meaning racism is not an issue, but half-joking meaning there's obviously lots of things that irritate me a little bit, but certainly the, the first world problem that irritates me the most is uh, people trying to seem smart, but making themselves look incredibly petty in the process, I would say. For another example that I've brought up in videos many times before is when people get a pronunciation slightly wrong, or maybe they, like, misspelled something on Reddit, and then the next person is like, just being helpful here, you know, you're not really being helpful. If, if you're an English teacher and they've contracted you for English teaching studies, then you're being helpful, yes, but you're just kind of being a dick. It'd be like, at the grocery store, you know, you put like a, oh, cool, a range upgrade on everything. You put like a bag of potato chips in your cart, and the person's like, oh, I just want to be helpful, did you know that those are bad for you? Of course! Everyone knows that. Long story short, you can say I'm going up or down to whatever country you please, uh, unless you were like, on, the, there's physically separated by a staircase that goes in the opposite direction, in which case you're just being a silly dude, aren't you? If they're like, I'm gonna go down to the attic. At that point, it's like, where are you in space right now? Just be real with me, man. Um, but, long story short, unless we're talking about topography or elevation, mainly the U2 song, but also the, the physical concept, uh, then I don't want to hear it. It just doesn't make any sense. And you know who's guilty of this is, you know, on the NLSS. You know, I was up in San Francisco last weekend. You, well, this is something that's very... Why did I walk back into this room? It's because I'm getting distracted. Okay, let's chill out here for a second. I've got bombs and I know how to use them. We're going to try to find our way to this boss room. Did I already check inside of here? It's a golden chest that scares me a little bit, but also titillates me. All right, so I should not have come in here. We're going to be fighting three bosses. 
It's like, um, you know, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. We're gonna, unfortunately, have to fight bosses of increasing difficulty, and maybe Jacob Marley's gonna show up. Mostly, I just don't want to fight Chubb anymore, because, seriously, fuck. This dude just shows up all the goddamn time, like, having some the degree of reason, please. Also, I'm a little bit concerned that I may be absent-minded enough to accidentally pick up this matchstick and then, uh, you know, leave with it, and that would be pretty shitty. If I leave with that, it's gonna leave with half. Half of my viewers, and the rest of them are just gonna be mad at me. So, we've already gone through this room. I'm getting, like, some serious deja vu here, uh, over and over. I'm saving this High Priestess card. In all likelihood, uh, it's a luxury that I will have to use in order to stay alive on the Isaac fight. So, the High Priestess card will come down, and it will hopefully do enough damage to Isaac that I can maybe eat my way out of that fight with Book of Belial active and, um... You know, eight bombs and the Polaroid invincibility. I'm not sure if you get extra invincibility by way of the Celtic Cross at any point. I don't think you could. It would just be, like, redundant. Uh, friends till the end? Sure. Let's pop that open, I guess. And there they are. We also got Sad Onion, which is fine. You know, um, Sad Onion could end up playing a, a role in letting us do more damage, which is nice. I'm okay with that. Two more Spirit Hearts is actually pretty uh, extraordinarily beneficial at this point. I've been kind of bleeding damage for a while, so it's nice to be able to replenish my health a little bit. Am I gonna, you know, Northern Lion, you're a little bit tight on health. Do you really want to go to this, uh, oh, that was so bad. Do you really want to go to this room in here? Absolutely, I do. Uh, going to the secret room doesn't mean shit to me, but, um, going, uh, maybe it does. Because I might as well, I can go for free. And by for free, I mean I'm still going to get hit. But now it'll, it'll, I'll get hit and it'll give me a free secret room, which could have been something amazing, and then I can just bomb out. In fact, uh, why don't I bomb out over here? Oh, what the heck? Did the flies do that? Um, but maybe I'll bomb out over here so that I can, um, you know, maybe be closer to the boss. Yes, uh, that did cost me an extra bomb. Bombs are not the most important limited resource right now. Health definitely is. It could make a difference, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's going to be uh, an enormous difference, shall we say. Uh, why are you not using Book of Belial more often? It sounds like I'm just reading Twitch chat. I have, I'm have i reading the Twitch chat of my mind right now. Uh, why am I not using Book of Belial more often? I am not using Book of Belial more often because I don't know when the boss room is going to be and I want to make sure that I have it ready uh, for the boss fight rather than having to recharge it or, God forbid, not have enough rooms to recharge it which would uh, very much make it less likely that I would uh, be able to beat Isaac himself, and obviously that's going to pose some problems for us to move forward then. So, uh, unfortunately this is not the right way to go, but fortunately we're going to be fighting some pretty easy enemies in the interim period, which may give me some consumables, eh, more bombs. Not the end of the world, it is theoretically possible that there is a boss room uh, at the very top there, but it's unlikely, to say the least. And I'll have to end up backtracking through that room regardless if the boss room's not over here. I've been taking some dumb damage, and it is the kind of damage, you know, the, you know, the breed of damage, if you will, uh, that could end up coming back to bite me in the ass pretty hard. Uh, I certainly don't think, you know, losing three or four spirit hearts on the cathedral is... Oh, that's really shitty. Is irrelevant at this point, uh, but I don't quite have the speed necessary to get out of the way of those guys. Um, we have decent enough damage that I feel... Oh, that sucks so hard. I just... I saw it coming, but I couldn't figure out how to get out of the way fast enough. I guess WASD probably would have been a good answer. Oh, okay. Uh, fish head. Pretty shitty. Now we have to go through this whole song and dance again. Um... On the bright side, now they're in kind of succession with one another. Or they're con standing consecutively, or, you know, you know what I mean. They're they're standing next to one another is the normal way to say it, so that I could actually hit them both with Robo Baby at least simultaneously. And my missed shots uh, become hit shots on the other one occasionally. So this fight's actually going a lot better and making me feel a lot better uh, in, as well about not... Uh, Realizing I was about to pass through that door when I got hit, thus causing me to have to go through the stream again. But no big deal. Okay, this is an important fight. We can only get hit once. So, High Priestess comes down. High Priestess does maybe 10%. Ah, d ooh, I did Book of Belial and then it came down again. All right, Northern Line cheats by accident and ends up uh, giving himself a substantially increased chance of victory from probably like 2% up to maybe 5, 10%. We'll see. Uh, obviously, Polaroid Invincibility is gone now, and I have died. But it was fun while it lasted, and we found out a cool trick at the end. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure to show your support, show your support by clicking the like button and subscribing. I apologize that now it's been at least two episodes since I won, but I tried! What more do you want from me? We're almost at 69,000 frames encoded here. In any case, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode, and of course, make sure to show your support. You can subscribe if you want to see more Isaac on a daily basis. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.